Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank God this morning for another opportunity to share his word with the people of God and those who will come on at maybe at a later time to listen to what the Lord has to say. Father, we do thank you for you are so good. You are so kind. You are so gracious. You are so merciful. Father, we just give your name the praise. All glory, honor, and praise belongs to you now and forever. Father, we just give you glory for your word this morning that will go forth, touching the hearts of your people. Father, bringing forth transformation, Father God, we just give you all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This morning, we're continuing, and we thank, first of all, all, we do thank God, but we do want to thank uh, our host, Elder Barbara Trotter Phyllis, for allowing us an opportunity to share her platform with her. And we just give God praise for that. And I pray God's richest blessings upon her. God's grace and favor will continue to rule and reign in her life. We are still in the book of Romans. We are continuing in chapter six. Uh, I will be reading Romans 6, chapter verses 6 through 11, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, for he has died, excuse me, for, who, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall live also with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. My God, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Hallelujah. And I will be focusing on uh, verses 10 and 11. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I just want to pivot here this morning with uh, our elder Barbara's permission. I want to just go in a different direction this morning. I know we've been in the book of Romans. Uh, we've been sharing about sin and God's gracious gift to us being Jesus Christ, our Lord. But I just want to go in a different direction this morning. I'll give you some things to consider. And I don't usually give a title to what I share, but this morning, I believe that what I have to share with you this morning does deserve to be titled. And the title of what I'm going to share with you this morning is Let Us Live This Life. And if I may say it in another way, we shall, and this is a declaration, we shall live this life. For if we were to take inventory of a wealthy person, we can say that he has mansions or he may just have one mansion. He has yachts, he has stocks, bonds, assets in silver and gold. You would say he has a wealth portfolio. Have you ever considered, stop to think, uh, this person may have all of this, but not have life. The Bible says, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Listen carefully, I am not, believe me, I am not condemning the wealth. For Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And we can find this in Mark 8, 36, this passage in Mark 8, 36. A man should enjoy the fruit of his labor. Only remember, lest you forget that it is he, it is God who gives us the power to get well. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all who dwell in it. Everything in it belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah because we have this new recreated life, this resurrected from the dead life, a life forgiven of sins, 
sin's life, this life, the Bible said, was previously dead, but now is alive. This life that is now justified and declared righteous as though we never sinned. And my question is, what manner of life ought we to live? This life, lest I forget, the Bible tells us, for God who spared not his only son, but freely, he freely gave him up for us all. How much more shall he also with him freely give us all things. Second Peter chapter one, verses three through five tells us, and I will be reading it from the scripture, and his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. And I want to preface that. I want to put that in parentheses, I want to put emphasis on this through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these we may be partakers of His divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. Now, my question is how can we? have all of these benefits of a kingdom life and not live it. Now that is hypocrisy. My God, with this life, this new life comes love, joy, peace, health, and provisions. Jesus spoke with his, his disciples one day after being with them for, for a while. He asked them this question. Have you been with me all this time and not known me? Do you now believe, he went on to ask them. They responded saying, yes, Lord, we believe that you are the Christ. Since we know we have been redeemed, justified, and saved from this present evil world, we have been translated into his kingdom by his dear son. These things we come to know, we've come to find out we come to be intimately acquainted with this through Jesus Christ. The Father's question to us this morning is, since we know he is ours and we are his, what are we going to do with him? My God, I understand this question to me. What are we going to do with the knowledge concerning his grace and righteousness? What are we gonna do with this knowledge concerning our lives have been resurrected. He has given us a resurrected life. What are we going to do with this life? My God, hallelujah. Now the unregenerated man cannot answer this question. The man who has not been born again cannot answer this question. I used to pray a prayer like this. Lord, convict the world of sin. And sin truly must be dealt with. It must be judged, the Bible says. However, it is the goodness of God that leads men to repent. I believe being convinced of his righteousness has a great and powerful effect on the hearts of men, which allows these exceeding great and precious promises to become available to all men. Here are a few things I believe we can do to live this life. We can allow Christ to live his life through us. This is what that statement looks like. Lord, how can we serve you? Serving him is serving others. For Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve. Secondly, we can agree with his promises concerning us without doubting, without disputing, or without denying his word, hallelujah. And number three, we can continue to abide in him. For Jesus said, I am the true vine. You are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. 
Truly without him, we can do nothing. And guess what? Before he left, he said, I'm not going to even leave you alone. I'm going to send to you the promise of the father. Jesus said it was necessary for me to leave in order that the Holy Spirit would come and he was going to be with you forever. He would abide with you forever, but he did say to abide in him. And as I conclude in my summation this morning, this is what I want to share. We have been crucified with Christ. It is us. We no longer live, my God. And Paul said we have to put to death our flesh daily. We die to ourselves. And, it, it, and to me, uh, my expression here is before I finish the scripture is, Lord, I yield my life to you. Not Let it not be my will, but let your will be done. Hallelujah. It, the, the scripture goes on to say, that it is no longer us who lives, but Christ who lives in us. And the life that we now live in this flesh, in this body, hallelujah, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Let us pray, for we shall live this life. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you this morning for the life that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. My God, we thank you. Father, those who will hear, who have not been born again, my God, your word, your word declares, Father God, that a man must be born again in order to see the kingdom them in order to comprehend in order to perceive the kingdom of god he must be born again of the water and of the spirit father we thank you that we who are born of the water and of the spirit and have been resurrected our old man has been put to death and now we are alive in god father we just thank you for holy spirit helping us to live it out my god we give you glory we give you praise and honor we yield our lives to you father that we came to serve for your word declares that low in the volume of the book we have come to do your will oh god Father, I ask, my God, that you will touch those, Father, whose eyes are closed this morning. My God, may their eyes open, may their hearts receive, may their ears hear, and their hearts understand. Father, we give you glory for touching hearts and lives this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. What a powerful word, my God.